Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining in for my uh, persuasive speech today. We're going to dive right in. Uh, today's subject is about building a case for discipleship ministry in the church, fulfilling the Great Commission in the 21st century. Uh, I know all of us are churchgoers on this on this uh, call, and um, I know many of you have gone to church and you watch people go up when they make the invitation call. Uh, the pastor comes down and he greets the the person, and they are um, giving their life to Christ. Um, it's called the invitation call. But my question that I'm posing to the church today is, what are we doing after the altar call? We should be making disciples. Now, uh, there's several different um, terminologies that uh, people uh, view discipleship in many different ways. And these are just two definitions that I saw in my research. Um, the di discipleship is the deliberate and intentional efforts of leaders to teach and demonstrate the values, attitudes, and behaviors that are consistent with Christianity. And a lot of focus is placed on continuing in the word to move the believer from a babe to a mature servant of the Lord. Uh, another definition is a person who is a born again believer who desires to learn what the Bible teaches, seeks to obey God's instructions and is committed to following Christ's example and teaches the truths of scripture to others. It is a deliberate process of moving Christians forward spiritually. Now, there's a big problem in between the invitation call and discipleship uh, because I can even go back to my own life. When I first got saved, I went to church and for a year I was okay. But when I went to church, there was no uh, set way of coming into the church and having someone mentor me in the word. We were told and preached at what we should do, but there was never anybody there to demonstrate or to actually sit down with us in the word and show us how we were to live the Christian life. Uh, all we knew was that we supposed to go to church and we supposed to tell other people about Jesus, but we never got the rudiments of what it takes. We never had a strong foundation laid in us to keep us on that straight and narrow path. So what was the problem? Current research is suggesting that the church has failed to adequately disciple congregants, which leads to the following problems. A pronounced decline in biblical literacy. People don't even know the books of the Bible anymore. They don't know the Old Testament, the New Testament. They don't know anything about how to study. Um, and so there has been a decline in biblical literacy. Uh, there's a growing exodus of believers from evangelical churches. Now, the evangelical churches are the ones that are known for evangelizing. They're the supposed, to, supposed to be the ones with all of the gifts in operation. But yet people, uh, especially millennials, they are leaving the church. And these are believers that are leaving the church. Uh, and it, there's an acceptance of inactivity among evangelical Christians. People don't want to work in the church anymore. They don't want to usher. They don't want to be in the choir. They don't want to make a commitment to serve in the ministry anymore. Uh, there's been a de-emphasis on discipleship training in the church and younger evangelicals are leaving the church in search of truth. Now, if the Bible is supposed to be the ultimate truth, why are younger evangelicals leaving the church in search of some other truth? If your church is not growing, your lack of discipleship may be showing. Uh, research shows the following issues in the church. There's been, and this is up-to-date research, 22% drop in percentage of families who bring their kids under 18 to church. There's church volunteerism is down 21%. Sunday school involvement is down 17%. As a matter of fact, I don't know anybody, and most of the people that I know are Christians, I don't know too many people that say that they go to Sunday school or that they their church even has a Sunday school anymore. Uh, believers are willing to consider other belief systems or spiritual options. Believers are burning sage because they think that it will drive spirits out of their house. 
that's one of the ma major examples of people considering other belief systems. Then there's other people that are now into ancestral worship. They're going back to the uh, old uh, religions like uh, uh, in the uh, in, uh, a lot of the African traditional things that they used to do. People are going back into that. People are willing to pursue faith in structures that are not the typical church. People are willing to go anywhere and they're calling a lot of things church that are really not church. 72% of people in this survey said that they are more likely to develop their own religious beliefs. So people are just kind of doing what they want to do. And all of these are not people who were unchurched. These are people who were in the church, but they were never made disciples. Lack of sustained discipleship leads to spiritually immature congregations. Now, you're asked, what is a spiritually immature believer? They are gullible to all these strange doctrines, and that would uh, explain the behavior that we just talked about in the last slide. Uh, people going into strange religions, um, cultish type things, and, um, and, and all of this is because they have no foundation in them. Immature believers have their faith easily shaken by life circumstances or new waves of doctrine. Spiritual immaturity, immaturity shows itself in strife among members of the body of Christ. We have believers fighting and gossiping and tearing other believers apart. That is sure sign of spiritual immaturity. Immature believers are often controlled by their fleshly impulses. We have uh, pastors that are having affairs uh, on their wives. They're having uh, uh, children outside of their marriage. All of these things are because they're, they've been put in leadership and they've never really been mentored or discipled and learned how to overcome the lust of the flat, the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Uh, this is a quote. America has a spiritual depth problem because the faith community does not have a robust definition of spiritual goals. And the reason why I use this quote is because that is a very true statement because you've got to show people what salvation looks like down the road. And if they're not getting any examples, if they're not getting any teaching, if uh, because they say that Christ is our ultimate example, but the only way we can see Christ is through other people. And so if, you're le if you have no leadership, if you have no mentor, if you have no fathers in the faith that are demonstrating what a, a, a chaste and uh, real Christian life looks like, you're not going to see that uh, in the people. Then there's a research finding that out of 14 countries in a study, the United States is experiencing 60% of our new births to women between the ages of 20 and 24 are to single women. And so that is a sure sign right there that something is amiss in, in our uh, churches. This is what the experts are saying. Now, this was a study that was done on, some, on a lot of pastors and people who are experts in the religious field. They said that discipleship ministry is the backbone of a healthy body of believers. So if you see churches that are failing, churches that are closing, churches that people are leaving, then we need to look at what was, uh, uh, was there a lack of discipleship or, or was there poor leadership or was, uh, were the needs of the people being met? Discipleship ministry provides clarity and focus for the believer in the midst of an increasingly complex culture. Uh, we know that there's so much going on in the world right now, and we really don't know what to believe because there's so many false doctrines, false teachers. Uh, there's so many things happening in the political arena, and life has really become complex. You really don't know what to believe. And so we need, uh, we need to be discipled in the truth of the word so that we can know how to function in the, in, the, uh, in the way that things are right now. Spiritual growth manifests with the right understanding of God, and it manifests by development of the fruit of the spirit. I don't know when I've heard, uh, 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 a, uh, I don't know when I've heard anybody preach about the fruit of the spirit. Uh, we, we, you used to hear Galatians 5 and 22 talked about all the time, but now 
Uh, you hear things about prosperity. You hear things about money. You hear things about living your best life, but you really don't hear anything about what it takes to develop the fruit of the spirit. As the final mandate of Jesus, discipleship should be the first work of the church. So like I said at the beginning of my talk, that once that person comes in and they come down that aisle and they shake that pastor's hand and they get ministered to and they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, the next thing that they should be doing is placed in, a, uh, in, in some type of uh, program where they can become, start becoming disciples. In order to make disciples, the church must first surrender to the call, serve our fellow man, and allow God to plant us in the ground where he placed us. One of, uh, another problem with this is, is that we don't uh, people don't allow God to plant them anywhere. They just go where they want to go. And if they hear something that they don't want to hear, then they up and gone somewhere else. And so you never mature with that. We have a lot of people that just leave if they get offended about something that they hear. And so a strong discipleship ministry will uh, will help to people to understand that um, the word does come to chastise you because God said that if he uh, loved you, that he would chastise you as a son. And if you're not a son, then you're, 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 uh, you're a bastard. And that's the, the word says that. Has the church forgotten its mission? This is another quote. A church that does not make disciples has lost its identity and has missed the reason for which they exist. A church that evangelizes the lost, teaches congregants scripture, and challenges them to share the gospel is a church that will indeed experience growth. And a church that does not practice discipleship has forgotten the faithfulness of their God. And this is what the experts are saying. So um, part of my uh, talk today is to give some solutions for some of the problems that we've discussed. Um, the first thing we need to do is remember what the church is for. The church is not for all of the different things and programs and things that we're not going. The first work of the church is to make disciples. So we, re we need to remember that the church is called to make disciples, not converts, not church members. Making, disciple, uh, making discipleship training should be a main focus and priority. Then there's digital discipleship. We can use online technology to engage in discipleship activities through streaming, through web conferencing, and other digital platforms. We need to create online groups that foster connectivity among teachers, students, and the curriculum content. So in order for a, uh, an online group, discipleship group to work, you've got to have connectivity in three different places, the teacher to the student, the students to each other, and, the, and connect the student to the curriculum. So all of those connections need to be going on in order for there to be a harmonious type uh, community so that people can learn in one another because we learn from one another. We learn how to be strong disciples from connecting with each other, being an example and holding each other accountable. Engage students through communicating Christian presence and cultivating an atmosphere of hospitality. Um, people don't want to be told about their sins every time they show up. You need to have more in your curriculum than just talking about, uh, well, we don't fornicate, we don't do this or that. Well, you're telling me what not to do, but tell me what to do. How do I live this life? How do I overcome difficulties? How do I deal with my weaknesses? How do I deal with my relationships? These are all things that we need to be taught in a discipleship training. Uh, we need to create training that teaches intentional following of following of Christ and provides for foundational and theologically grounded material that is essential for a more spiritual walk. So the discipleship training is teaching your uh, pupils how to live after the spirit and not after the flesh. Uh, we need to engage some new spiritual metrics. Uh, what I mean is we need to create and use curriculum that does more than teach participants to follow Bible rules and live a moral lifestyle. There is more to life, to a, to a Christian life than just following the rules in the Bible and living holy. There's a whole lot in between that. 
Participants need to be taught to communicate with God through prayer and cultivate a real relationship with Jesus. Um, you can say, do you have a relationship with Christ? And people don't even know what you're talking about. So that's uh, another area that we really need to cultivate is telling people that although you can't see Jesus, he's there for you. And he's the one that he's your paracletos. He's the one that comes alongside you and comforts you and talks to you and walks with you and carries you through your difficulties. Participants should be taught how to apply the scriptures to their daily life and circumstances, create relational engagement and accountability associations among the fellowship encourage development of spiritual fruit as de evidence of maturity and growth which we'll find in galatians 5 22 and 24 and we should use culturally sensitive and adaptable methods of teaching uh the long lecture is 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 dead uh people's uh people's attention span is not that long anymore so we don't need no, anybody standing up over us giving a long, drawn out, boring lecture. It Teaching has to be interactive now. You have to come where the people are. You have to give people a chance to ask questions and get their, and, and, and get their needs met. They may have a question and if you have a two hour lecture and then they leave and never got a chance to have their question answered, that's not good discipleship training. And then we also need uh, to work along with our evangelistic team to create a continuum of care and community for new converts. And when I say continuum, I mean, as soon as the evangelists bring those people in, there needs to be something in place to keep them, uh, to keep them engaged because coming to church on Sunday is not enough. You need to have touch points with them all during the week. Uh, some churches have cell groups and things like that. And uh, Wednesday Bible study may not even be enough. You uh, New members class is not enough. You need to have somebody who will call and check on them and say, hey, how are you? Uh, uh, we were glad to have you at church Sunday. Are you coming? Do you need anything? And so it creating a spirit of welcome and hospitality. So my final question is, how are you going to take action. If you are in the church, if you're a believer, God has called you to be a person that is making disciples. So how are you going to take action is my question. The first step is to, is to surrender. And then you can repeat this prayer. If you'd like to unmute and repeat this prayer with me, I would appreciate it. If not, I will just say it over you. Lord, today, I voluntarily submit to the Lordship of Christ, and I want to become an imitator of you in every thought, word, and deed. I will do my best to share the good news of the gospel and fulfill the mandate to go into all the earth, teaching and making disciples of those who choose to believe. I surrender my gifts, talents, and treasures to be used in the service of advancing your kingdom in the earth. I promise to lead my flock away from the worldly idolatry of prosperity, popularity, power, and praise of men. I commit my efforts to the building up of the body of Christ through teaching, leading, and modeling your ways in my daily walk. In Jesus' name, amen. And then when we do that, I got my slides mixed up here, but when we do that, we can look for a mature body of believers. And can you imagine what that looks like? A mature body of believers are people who are transformed into the image and likeness of Christ, which is the ultimate goal. People who demonstrate a change in mindset and behaviors that are consistent with a Christian lifestyle. In other words, they've overcome the world and its temptations. People who demonstrate the love of Christ, even in negative situations. People who share the gospel with the lost, with zeal and excitement. People who volunteer to serve others in the ministry and the community. People who demonstrate faith and endurance in times of testing and tribulation. People who openly proclaim and defend the gospel against false teachings and ungodly practices. And people who can live and coexist peacefully among the brethren. People who have surrendered their gifts, talents and aspirations to the fulfillment of godly purpose can you imagine the power of this church 
thank you for listening to my talk today.